In the video, Documentation Best Practices of the Tech Powwow, I did forget one uh, key point here, uh, which is very important. I think it's probably one of the most important things uh, in that. So if I can recall correctly, what I'll do is I'll link uh, to this video uh, because this is, this is a big key. This is delineating your support limitations. Every, almost every client I've ever had um, has been very good at saying, you know, when I say to them, we don't, we don't need a single point in failure, we need to do it this way, almost all of them, uh, pretty much all of them actually, my individual clients are always good about listening. Um, I have never run across a problem with individual clients. Usually, this will come in a, like a big environment. Imagine a company of, let's say, 50,000 people. That's when you'll run into this issue, um, if ever. So maybe you'll never run into this issue in your career, but more than likely you're going to run into this at least once. If you run into this situation, and it'll almost always be in a big environment, uh, what you can do uh, in this situation in your documentation is basically put your support limitations. And trust me, this will save you a lot of headache, save you a lot of time. What do you do here? Um, in, in the situation that this applies in is basically you've warned multiple times that the approach that is current is not the correct approach, right? They've ignored you. Um, you warn again, like a disaster occurs and you're being ignored, okay? There comes a point though that just going around and warning people or even debating is a waste of time. Look, you, you'll probably be able to pick up very quickly when someone just doesn't want to pay attention to you. Like they just want to debate, they want to argue, they like doing that. I hate people who like arguing because they, they actually enjoy it. That's what they get excited about and it's all they're going to do is waste time. So at this point, they're wasting time, they're not being productive anymore, nothing is actually getting done and your warnings have been shown to be true when there's been disasters and people are ignoring those warnings. So here's a solution in these situations. Again, these are very rare. These only come in companies where you have 50,000 or more employees generally. You have big, big environments. Number one, delineate your support limitation and documentation. What do I mean by that? If you've said there is a single point in failure in the system, Okay, there's, it's not enough to be able to back up and restore. We cannot lose data. You guys are ignoring. We need to either have an active active model. We need to do transaction log backups. But let's say you're being ignored and say, I'm not going to support if there's another failure. Period. You know, there's, there's many other things that I have to do and I'm not going to support that. Document your suggestions, which have been ignored, specifying um, what you will be limiting your support. This particular database, which I have made warnings about, I will no longer be supporting. That's it, right? If these situations occur, I'll support re-indexing, I'll support maintenance, but if, but if we have another fail, uh, let's say if another failover or whatnot, then I'm not going to be supporting that. Whatever is causing issues that you're being ignored on. Then notify the team who, in these big environments, you're working with teams with the documentation and their appropriate management, right, as well. That may be the, C, uh, the what is it, this CTO or CIO. Sometimes it's not. This will prevent the, oh, well, we didn't know, right? And, and sometimes there are legitimate uh, issues where, let's say, uh, a manager wasn't in a meeting and they didn't know that, but if they weren't, notify them, right? And then do what you document. And this is a big one, right? If you say you're not going to support something anymore, which in these situations where you have made it, the warning clear, there's still disasters and you're still being ignored, then do what you document, okay? Uh, it's fair to you and it's fair to them. Okay, ultimately, if they're ignoring you, then they need to be the one supporting. And the reason is it's basic economics. I'll wrap this up with it's just kind of a, a simple, uh, just kind of a simple process that, that works in economics all the time, which is you get the behaviors, you receive the behaviors that you incentivize, right? If you incentivize good behavior, you're going to get more good behavior. If you disincentivize good behavior, you're going to get bad behavior, right? I mean, it's very simple. If somebody gets to create fires and you have to put it out or we have to put it out, then they can create fires all day long that we'll have to put out. They don't, they don't pay for that at all, right? And so if they listen to suggestions when there are disasters that make your life easier, that's one thing. But if they ignore suggestions, and again, this is usually only in bigger clients that think they can, um, then they're bringing it on themselves. So this is something that you will not run into with small clients. This is not something you'll run into in average environments. This is usually companies that have 50,000 plus employees, um, and there will just be a stubborn team, and there's nothing wrong with that. They become the supporters of that. You delineate your support. You put a boundary up and say, I'm not crossing this boundary.